Saludos amigos, Cash here, President and CEO of Real Estate in Los Terrenos.com. Guys, I've been promising you guys that I'm gonna be doing a very special video. There's been, uh, since the day I moved here, there's been a lot of families and parents reaching out to me to ask me about the educational system and what is accessible for them, their families, and their children. So today is a very, very special video for me because this is where I have chosen to entrust this gentleman who I'm gonna be introducing in a second with my four and a half year old. Her name is Elle, you guys have met her on the videos, a baby in person, she, this is where she comes to school. So this is a very special video to me and this gentleman here is doing so many great things for the community, for the Dominican Republic and he started this amazing school called Isla. Okay, so today's interview, we're gonna be speaking with him. We're gonna understand the background, how this all came to fruition and everything about this school. There's two campuses, so he's gonna explain that to you as well. And uh, you're in for a treat today, guys. So uh, enjoy this video. Okay guys, so we're gonna get rolling here. Uh, school just let out. Uh, Carissa just picked up Elle and they're on their way home. They're actually going to the beach, to Mosquito, to go swimming. Uh, what a life. So we're gonna start this interview today. School is out and I've got the attention of my good friend, Sean Bennett. He is the owner, founder, teacher, yeah. uh, motivator, everything. This is the guy who started this beautiful, beautiful school here in Las Trenas. Go ahead, introduce yourself, Sweet, Sean. Thanks. Well. Uh, my name is Sean Bennett, as I said before, um, and uh, I am a father of four as well, okay? Um, and longtime educator, counselor, school leader. Mm -hmm. um, have currently been in the Dominican Republic for nine years. Cool. Uh, been a part of building three different schools. Oh, wow. Um, two campuses here for Isla Academy, one in Las Tratas, one in Cabarete. That was, by uh, the way, the first campus I went to. Yes. Because uh, I, I was initially going to move to Cabarete. Yeah. And the first thing I did was, where am I going to send her to school? And I, that's how I that's came right. across you. And that would have been almost five years. What was yeah. it? No, it would have been three years ago that I started. Yeah, it kind of puts that, I, that timeline a bit like the trajectory of this school. Correct. This school is about three years old. And, okay. And over there is now in its seventh year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting. Uh, prior to that, I was a part of the founding administration for a very unique public school here, actually, called Liceo Scientifico. Uh, highly recommend checking it out. And it's in it's a small town. Can you repeat town, that? Liceo Scientifico. Okay. Uh, located in a town called Salcedo. Okay. Uh, the Dominican Republic's only public school for gifted and talented students. Wow. It's the only public school that focuses on a STEM background with project-based learning. It's the only Amazing. public school... Um, that is a provincial school, meaning there are students that come from okay. three different cities got it, got into it. this one area. Uh, it's just a magical right, place. Right. Now tell me a little bit about your uh, background leading up to that. Right. So prior to that, I, I, I graduated from um, University of Georgia in the U.S. Cool. Uh, with an early childhood background. I started a counseling firm for families. Okay. Amazing. Uh, mostly working with middle school and high school children who were either involved in the juvenile justice system got or it, the it. Department of Family and Children's Services. Yes. Um, after that, I moved to South Korea. Oh, wow. That's uh, amazing. Did two years there teaching a variety of ages, moved to Vietnam after that. <laughs> That's amazing. I didn't know all this. Yeah, I worked wow, in an cool. international school in Vietnam. Um, and then um, my dream was to live in Tanzania. Uh, amazing. I applied to a school in Tanzania, and during the interview process, I was offered the the role of the new, the director of a brand new campus. Cool, cool, a, cool. Very similar size to here. How old would you have been at here? the time? 30. Oh, wow, just, just new in, yeah. in the industry, new, your career's just getting going. That's right. Yeah. Um, and I was prepared to say yes to of course. Like, 
any position that they were giving me, but when they when they opened that, uh, I was wow. super excited about it. Um, got there to Tanzania and it was uh, a campus that was almost totally incomplete when we got there. The walls okay. had not been painted yet, the tables had not been built, and we opened two weeks from there. Oh my God. And that sort of is like uh, the trajectory of my understanding of what it's like to build a school. I'm so accustomed Expose to being- Expose you to what it is, what you're doing today. What it takes, uh, well, what it takes to start from you know, a property yes. to get it ready. To Limited be, resources, I'm assuming. Right. Limited budgets. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And you know, to also I think uh, the critical part is like, there's this thing that's missing in a school, which is the culture of a school. Of course. How to develop a culture yes. in a school. Um, that's one of the big challenges in a brand new school is to figure out a way that people feel like they're a part of some community. And you know what, you hit right on, you hit the nail right on the head there, because that was one of the things that really gravitated me to make the most important decision of my life to bring my our only daughter here was I sensed there was a sense of culture yeah uh, and the teachers all genuinely care about the students and everything happening and then your presence uh, it just completely sets the culture for this entire place yeah, yeah I love it it's a, you nailed it it's um you know this is I was just speaking to a teacher today because okay. This is this is their whole day. This is their whole life, and I'm not I, I'm referring not, to the students. Or the, the children, yeah, the deal. children. I mean, this is yes, they go home and stuff, but this is really their social life. Completely, this is their work life. Yes, there is no you know night life for children of except course. in the house. This is, this is it. it. This is where it all happens, and so the where feeling, the happens, yeah. right? The feeling of how that is, whether they feel cared for and exactly. capable of taking risks, uh, is so critical to. You know their ability to feel comfortable to take a risk, try new things. Correct. Um, and so it is. It's above anything, essentially. It really is above. It really anything. is. It really is. Tr truly is because that this is uh, where L's day begins, and this is where L's day ends, right. and then she goes home, where she does activities with us and stuff like that. But this is where what she learns here and the people she's exposed to are going to create that foundation for her right. for the rest of her life. Yeah. Uh, the most formative years, right? That's what you have. You have them for their most formative years. Uh, so yeah, Sean, I really, really uh, appreciate what you've done culture-wise. And this is what I feel, uh, my, my background uh, really quick, which my subscribers know, uh, I went to Ball State University, so I went to school in the U.S. as well. I did my undergrad, my master's over there. Uh, so I'm very in tune with cultures of different schools uh -huh. and that environment and how that breeds. Uh, top notch or lack thereof talent coming out of schools. Now I've heard you have Ivy League students coming out of this. They've gone to Ivy League schools. Well, we've had students who've been accepted, but we don't have students currently in Ivy League. We have students, got it, got in, we have students in uh, Boston College. We have Amazing. We have uh, multiple students who won national scholarships here for United World College, wow. which is a very wow, prestigious wow. area. Very, very prestigious. Students have been then accepted to schools in, in Canada and Spain and the U.S., Mexico, Costa Rica. Yes. Um, so when students graduate, they're literally going anywhere in the world. It's a very unique thing about here is. is that in many schools, I mean, and this is somewhat um, typical of certain uh, international schools, but in a community like this where we're not an American school, we're not a Canadian school, we're not a French school, we are a truly international school. Yes. So our children who are here, often they, many of them possess multiple passports. Correct. And when you ask them where they intend to study university, their answer is not back in my home country. It is literally anywhere six different you know potential places so they are trying to we 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 are not some sort of a feeder for the u.s system we Correct. are a feeder for anywhere you want to go and that's 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 the big kind of guiding principle is not to prepare you for one thing but to prepare you for anything and that's that's a, again another reason everything you're saying is exactly the reasons why we chose this for our daughter uh we love the fact the international component of it mm -hmm. we there's literally students from uh you could say better like 30 where? different countries 30 different countries. Yeah. Oh my God. So, so guys, I don't know if you heard that clearly. I, I'm hoping you did. 30 different countries. Now, L would have never had that opportunity had we decided to stay in our hometown of Windsor, Ontario, Canada. She would have went to school with, which uh, guys, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying this is out there. What, what we're doing yeah. really for people is we're showing them what is possible. What I mean, is out there for I'll take children. it a step further. Yes. Okay. And it's taken some years for me to, like, for me to realize this and figure it out, but when your years, your formative years, multiple years are spent in a space where the students in your area are different ages. Yes. They're from different cultures, different nationalities. Good point. Something happens. 
that really cannot, we cannot take full credit for it. But something happens where there is no norm. Okay, oh, and that's wow. a that's a feeling that most that's of us beautiful. experience when we're in high school, right? We we're trying to fit in. We want to do something. Status quo. Status there is quo. no norm. The norm here is to be totally different. Cool. What happens when you go back to your home country, to some more? Uh, let's say first world, very. Structure. Yeah, let's say you go back to Canada. Let's you go say back you go, within the box. Let's say that. Sure. The matrix. And and, and there's this, um, you know, I think there's this concern. Well, how we take my child from a beach town in, in the Dominican Republic to, to, to Paris or Toronto or New York and how will they be able to fit in. What we have seen so frequently is that when the kid gets to these places, which are often like filled with anxiety and, and worry, Correct. the kids already know who they are. Yes. They're clear, they are confident, and they're authentic with themselves. Very well said. And so when they get there, it really turns out something that is so ironic is that Children all over the place will accept people who are truly themselves. Yes. And so when a kid shows up in this area mm -hmm. and they've been abroad for years, but they are authentically themselves, they are not attempting to fit in, they are themselves. True self-awareness. Sure, they find themselves quite accepted yes. by, by the group. That's actually something that's the topic of uh, so many books and documentaries and everything, self-awareness. Yeah. They develop that self-awareness here because they're exposed to people from 30 different countries. Yeah. Uh, for example, Elle came here speaking English. Okay. She's now exposed to French. She's exposed to Spanish. Right. Uh, she's exposed to how many other languages are spoken? Okay. 30 different yeah. countries. You yeah, do your math, a, right? Pretty straightforward. So that self-awareness gets built early and you're not hunting for that later on in life when you're in those yeah. moments of your first day of college. That's a tough time to be trying to figure out who you are. So if you can figure that out in advance, in an environment I mean, you're like also this, not attempting beautiful. to compare yourself yes. to some particular thing, right? You're comparing yourself to yourself. Yes. And that's really what we want, right? We want to be better today than we were yesterday. We want to keep progressing. But when we find ourselves in most traditional schools, it is accepted and it's actually built into the system that whatever the standards are for seventh grade students yes. in this area, there are going to be a, a percentage of students who aren't doing well. There's gonna be a percentage of students who figure out how to do well and play the system. And you ultimately the begin- that excel, yeah. Yeah, it creates this type of, I, I believe like, an anxiety Correct. as you become an adult. Which I felt, you probably felt throughout yeah. your career. Well, it's just like, student, right? are you really willing to try new things Correct. if you spend your formative years being discouraged from trying different things, right? Totally agree. There's a status quo that exists and, and you're forced to kind of stick to that. And if you go too far off that beaten path, you get pulled back. I don't feel that is a scenario here for L. I mean, there's so many paths, there's right? There's so many Success, paths, right? Yes. There's a, uh, and the, the true, I don't know. I, I, I think what we're all sort of looking for is to find our own. It's not to- Every single one of us. Yes. Right, not to follow someone else's. So totally. we, if we can find our own, and we love it. There's no, there's no particular career that is the only one that's going to be able to find success 100%. for you. And also, life's not all about that. Anyway, yeah, so. yeah, no, it's totally you yeah. nailed it, uh, guys. What I'm going to do here really quick is I'm going to pause and I'm going to be uh, running. Th there is a video that you did that uh, brings tears to my eyes. Actually, every time I listen to it, and I think it's going to do the same thing to you guys. So. Uh, I want to go ahead and run that video right now. This is how I got really introduced to Sean, uh, not physically, but as, as a person in his, uh, his motto and his way of wanting to run the school and his belief in children overall. So uh, watch this video really quick and we'll be right back. idea that that schools uh, should be uncomfortable 
and the students should be made to sit in a line, told how to dress, how to move about. They should be given the page numbers that they're, to, they're supposed to explore, and they should be taught how to follow instructions all the time. And, and those skills, it turns out, are not that difficult to learn. You know, and when you give students an environment that's comfortable and supportive, when you speak to children as though they're your equal, you end up finding that you get more from them. You know, that you can that you can say that harsh word when it's needed, but that if you really want a student to, to reach their potential, you're never gonna drag them to that place. They have to want that so much. let me be free. This school sort of made me realize that the freedom and independence I have here, I could have it for the rest of my life. Learn to love to learn. So guys, uh, I guarantee that struck you guys exactly the same way it struck me when I first heard it. And it, I've listened to it countless times and it was one of the driving uh, forces that helped me feel confident in moving here because a big decision for parents like us is when we move, we worry about our children's well-being, their education, right. uh, and that gave me some security in the decision to change our lives and move here. Um, so I just I want to ask you a couple quick questions about that, the okay. mindset of that. Uh, what inspired those magical words that came out of your mouth when you did? Um, well, I, I've, I mean, probably there's some, there's some personal experience that comes from this, which is that uh, my career as an educator was. It's, it's a unique, it's a unique it path is. that I took to get I here. I appreciate it, And yes. uh, I worked with a lot of different ages and a lot of different cultures for a long time, socioeconomic backgrounds. And so um, when you constantly, you're, you're, with, you're with children, you're with people that are mm -hmm. learning, but they're, they're, they're different ages. They're, yes. you, you have to find something that Correct. can resonate the whole way. You have to totally. find your own system. Yes. And for me, um, I... Despite the fact that I was a trained educator, I was really more of a counselor, and I realized that like yes. most most children, even adults, mm -hmm. if they really want to learn, that's the biggest part of it. You know, it's not this about ties into your slogan. Yeah, it's not. So, yeah, learn to love to learn. It's that's not their slogan. Learn to love to learn. It's not that these concepts are impossible to do, and in fact. Even the really challenging ones, you know, calculus and this yeah, type yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah, of course. Look, that's a challenge. There's no doubt about it. Uh, and there are people that can do it under duress. Yes, and yes, being yes. forced to do it. That is absolutely like true a, as well. Like a final exam. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, and there's a time for that when of there's course. a relevance to that. But, but you have all those courses here as well. Yeah, I just... It, but there, there has to be some, some, some real effort put into lighting the switch. And I, and I say that Got because, it. look... We're, we're not going to have a school here that is uh, going to attempt to make everyone be at the same level. It's, it's just not going to happen when there are 30 different cultures of here. Of course, of course. So what we've got to do is seek to keep everyone's fire as bright as possible. Cool. And in that sense, then they can start to seek their own particular path. Self, back to self-awareness. It's also, I think, yeah. a big shift really that's happening in education. I truly believe this is yes. that not much has changed in schools 
to account for the fact that we now, our children, mm -hmm. now have access to all of the information that they totally want. Totally makes sense, yes. And so often in the past, education was about the teacher being the gatekeeper for all of the knowledge Correct. and giving it to you if you would sit there and listen quietly. In the manner that you were, yeah. they were told to give it to you. The yes. students have access to it now. Yes. And so what is most important is that they actually point. want to access it. Yes. They know how to determine if what they're finding is true or not, which yes. is pretty critically important. Very, very critical. But there has to be that curiosity that is there, yes. right? I agree. And that curiosity, curiosity is so often... Um, it's, Very it's so point. often destroyed in, in other types of schools. And I don't think that it's intentionally destroyed by many people, but it's I do system. think- It's just the system. I, right? and, I, and I think that there's a lot of teachers worldwide who know that. Yes, correct. And they're not being given the ability to take their classroom and their group of students and actually teach what they need, kind of get let the children focus on the things they need. Correct. Most of the most of the issues in education seem to stem from this fact that teachers are made to push children to some particular area. Correct. The students don't quite understand the relevance. Sometimes even the teachers don't quite understand the relevance. Correct. Correct. And then all of a sudden you have this you have this day, this yes. whole life where you're spent doing tasks that Stuff don't you don't even know why matter. you're doing it anymore right. yes they don't matter correct correct uh, you're, you're, that, that, that is destroying the fire within right in my opinion so the, the flame continues here and you make sure that you keep it keep it ignited with the creative way we're gonna do a walk of the campus as well and you guys are gonna see like this tree behind us uh, every most trees I'd say 80% of the trees yeah. here have been labeled with a QR code okay the student has the ability to go up to a tree uh, it's teaching them technology, how to use a QR code. Students to... made it. Oh, the students made yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, we didn't do that. Oh my God, the isn't students, that cool? <laughs> the students came up with this concept. Yes. Okay, the students wow. identified each That's of amazing. the trees on campus. They created a small web link for each of those. Oh they God. linked that to a QR code, which then they posted on the tree. So that's, you know, those are real, real world skills. Sure, and you're taught right it's, now. It's not just science class, right? No. There's tech. There's Us. there's writing because they were able. They had to describe each one. Correct, correct. There's uh, plant identification. There's literature. There's art to it. I mean, there's also they painted these, which is a bit yeah, 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 yeah. But there's this real design yeah, and absolutely. Design. And then you know, also there is nothing like walking past something that you made. Yes, to give every you single this day. feeling. You yes. mentioned culture. If you want kids to love their school then let them be an owner of it. Let Correct. them be a part of building it, painting it, designing Isn't it. Isn't that amazing? That's because like, once they see it, then they're, they go, that's mine. And unfortunately, uh, at least I'm going to speak North America-wise, I feel like that's lost. And I've went through the system and you've went through the system. And uh, I feel like even in the post-secondary system, it's lost. Yeah. But over here, you're, you're lighting a flame that has been put out, unfortunately, I feel. Or, you know, I'm not going to say everywhere, but in most places... Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say that flame has diminished and it's keeping up with the status quo and that's your goal. It's not even, the, it's, it's, I get a lot of, um, maybe I'll meet some of you and I get a lot of families yeah. who, who, who come and, and maybe their child didn't love school and they'll come and talk to me about it and they'll initially want to kind of talk about why and, yeah, and yeah, share yeah. their stories. Correct, correct. And I find myself often to be the defender of places of that the other I don't programs, know, yes. but I'll, I'll say it like this: I don't really think that that is the intention. Of course, it's not I as though you. any teacher that was in my early childhood Correct. education Good program point. intended to do that. It's that they're being held accountable. They're being held accountable yes. for a level that is completely disconnected from the reality in their classroom. I understand. And so, yeah. when there's a child who comes to them with a need they're unable to address it often. It's not that they don't want to, they're just unable to do they're it because the hands to. are tied. There's exactly. a system in place that exactly. they need to oblige. I mean, and these, these things have never been more apparent than post, you know, two years of virtual learning and lockdowns where point, students yes. really did not receive uh, what they were, most students did not yeah, receive what they were getting. Uh, and so they've returned to classrooms in many parts of the world mm -hmm. and teachers the world over are leaving the profession in droves. One of the main reasons is they feel such immense pressure to make up yes, yes. for learning loss. The truth is a student, when that flame is lit, can likely learn all of the standards from K through 12 
in a matter of three years. You know, if I, I've read that somewhere uh, a year ago or so. I read that, yeah. that everything that is learned K through 12 sure. can be done in, and I think it was the, the article I read was within a year. Everything can be condensed into one year and everything they learn in those 12 years can be put into one year. And, 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 but we're telling them that they're behind, they're way behind, you know? And they're simply not, they're where they're at. And, yes, I agree um, with that. And there are people who are ahead, but then lose Again, that the passion. social element of it, right? Maybe self awareness I mean, gets lost in that process of trying to be so far ahead of the status quo that all their energy goes to that, and they lose the social element. What are you doing it for? Also, uh, it is twenty twenty two. Okay, so L is not likely to be in any particular career yes. for another fifteen years, and we now, don't even know what right? jobs are going to exist. Exactly. When, Think fifteen years ago. Wow. Yeah, fifteen think years about ago. That. No one was using social media. No one had smartphones. No one. There was no crypto. Yeah. Nobody was. And it's, and it's there very was a presentation here that yeah. I saw. Uh, my good friend's son. He's uh, he's got to be probably sixteen, right? Yeah, Fifteen ish. Right. And uh, he did. Uh, uh, he was doing a crypto presentation. Right. Yeah. Those yeah. Were, we did that, and we we we're we're working on some pretty interesting about fiat things. Currencies yeah. Absolutely. And crypto and you know. That, but that's driven by the kids. You know, that's driven by their interest because I think another thing that is not completely representative of Isla, but I think also representative of Las Terrenas, yes, is yes. that the families here don't all work at some industry or correct, some factory. Correct. This is a this is a community full of risk takers, entrepreneurs, correct. very active people. And so these children, when they look at what adult life is, yeah, that's they look what, at it different. Correct. Yeah, exactly. Correct. Exactly. So uh, yeah, uh, Sean nailed that. Uh, that's one thing that drove us to do this and pick Lost Terrenus specifically because it is full of people like myself that are entrepreneurs. Uh, most people are self-made. Uh, they're not uh, standardized in any way, nine to five kind of jobs. Uh, so the children in this environment are learning from their parents, learning from home, and they're very creative inherently creative because they're seeing that uh that is one of the benefits of being here as well I mean, their idea of what work is, is available to them not even just work but where right yeah imagine i i i came out of you know college around the 2008 i was a, well after college but around that 2008 yeah, 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 crisis and i remember i was already abroad at that point and i remember people saying the job market is terrible this and that and my first thought i was in korea at the time and i said but there are jobs everywhere. Yeah. The job market within 15 minutes of your house. It's like is you terrible, can have a job right? anywhere. Yeah. And these students, they grow up knowing yes. that if they would like to go to Belgium or Australia or Chile, they probably know someone there that I was you gonna communicate say that. with. At the end of this, uh, when L graduates, so uh, program is from what ages to what ages? Uh, here, this campus, we started at three years old. Cool. And Cabaretto, we started at two. Oh, wow. Uh, we go all the way through graduation. Right through graduation. Right. So yeah. Kindergarten. So uh, I was gonna spend 12 years, imagine the network of people around the world that she has access to. Right. That was not something that I was privileged to, or you were, and it, it, it's not, uh, again, not a good or bad thing. It's just, what an amazing opportunity for children that do go to this school. And also, even places where she doesn't know someone, it's not as though she feels unable Correct. to go somewhere. Yes, yes, It's yes. not seen as, I mean, for me, I'm from a very small town in Georgia, and I, I, um, I just had no idea what was out there. I thought I did, but I certainly did But little didn't. did you know, yeah. You know, and when people talk about, when I would go back and tell people that I had traveled to some country, they often thought I had left the planet, you <laughs> yeah. know, sometimes. That's how people feel about us. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. Um, and, and so that, that, that's not there. That's not going to exist for Elle or for our children. Correct. Uh, they see a lot of possibility they all over the globally. place. They think globally. They're not just thinking in a, on a micro level. They're Absolutely. Just, they're thinking yeah. the world, right? Yeah. Uh, and that's, what, that's one of the most amazing parts of this whole experience. And this goes back to self-awareness and uh, just becoming a worldly person and getting so many different experiences. Uh, now, with the school, uh, when, uh, when do you start in, after summer? And when is the last day of school, Christmas break? Talk a couple logistical yeah, type yeah, okay. things. Uh, so traditionally, um, we start the last Monday in August. Last Monday in August, okay. Uh -huh. We typically end uh, the second or third week in June. There's a national holiday here okay. that typically falls right around the end. So and that's this year, for example, June 15th, 
June 15th, uh, okay. We take three weeks around the Christmas, New Year's holiday. Great, great. Uh, traditionally, we've always taken one week in the fall okay. as well, uh, for many reasons. And then we take a spring break. Cool. That in this country, in the DR, everything's built around Semana Santa, which is the okay, week yes, preceding yes. Easter. Yes, yes. So correct. we take that as well. Yeah, you take that There's as well. There's about 180 days of school per year. Um, 180 days, got it. We arrive between 8 and 8.30. We leave between... The one thing I do like about dropping L off at school, it's a very uh, friendly, casual environment as you're bringing your child to school. Yes, school starts at 8.30, but uh, I see th there's a good 30 minute stretch of when parents are getting their kids mm -hmm. to school. And I do appreciate that. It's not, uh, what's the word? R run with an iron fist. Right, right. Uh, where the anxiety starts before you get to school yeah, because you're late, you're late, you're late. Uh, I, I appreciate the fact that it is very casual and yeah. the children come in calm, parents come in calm. Uh, I love that. And we like to play pickup. music when people And today we dropped off Al and the music was playing yeah. uh, and it just helps that, uh, you know, uh, back to self-awareness and all those cool things. All those things happen in a structured fashion, but it seems coincidental. But you know, you've thought through these things. I well, I think, let's be real, when you drop your child off, that moment and when you pick your child up, is the majority of your your personal experience. Yeah, that is least, our experience. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if that is fraught with a bunch of stress, your feeling about that is also oh, transferred totally to your child, totally makes right? sense. Um, my mentor was a man named Dr. Molinato, who was the okay. founder of Liceo Scientifico, and he was also the headmaster at the school in Tanzania where I was. Nice. And as a young director, I called him up and I said, this is right before the first day of school, okay. I said, that, you know, we're working really hard. How do we prove it like what, what are the show what, it, yeah. yeah what are what, the parameters how yes, are we like, how are we, we going to be measured yes. here uh, yeah. what, and he said if you want people to know that it's working let them come in and see it there you go and i never forgot that because that was sort of the the birth of me thinking about doing things like presentation days yes i was going to touch on that before opening, we do our walkthrough yeah opening up our school and saying we shouldn't be scared of people yeah. coming into the classroom show them what you're doing yeah absolutely yes. right and unfortunately it's not like that everywhere it really well, because isn't. again as a as a teacher at schools like this when some when an administrator or a parent walks past your school there's an expectation of what it's supposed yeah, to look like supposed and that to. pressure is then from the teacher is transferred to the child so when people are only going to walk by and get a cursory look at what is happening they're expecting to see order and control. Yeah. So the teacher is putting all the pressure on that and Correct. not on, really, there's a lot of magic that happens in chaos as well. I mean, of course. Conversations I, I, are I live loud. in chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah right. And I, you know? I, I couldn't live in anything else. I yeah. yeah. So I, I, I think um, if, if we're allowed to let that happen. Correct. Then, you know, as a, as a director, then I can make that, that, that feeling uh, known to the teachers, the For teachers sure. transfer that to the students. And it really all comes from having a community here where we share, we have many differences, it's but, a community, we, but we share a lot of similarities is that we all really do want our children The similarities to are love so school. strong right, yeah. that the differences can be worked out. Absolutely. Yeah, because yeah. the similarities are the, just like, yeah. they, they're the bond. I mean, we all, for whatever reason- We're human beings. We all move to a place that it, it feels different. You know, it feels it's beautiful. Right. And so, why would we want our children to be in some setting that doesn't also <laughs> totally feel agree. that way as well? You, say, you said it perfect. Yeah. You said it perfect. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Cabarete campus. Is okay. it basically the same hours, the same yep. setup? It's a. Uh, uh, it runs. Um, yeah, it runs the same same setup. Okay. Everything we run the same units of investigation. We do all our trainings together. Yes. Our elementary teachers communicate weekly with our teachers there. Correct. And cool. vice versa. All of our social media and accounts and everything Got goes in the same place. Uh, we start on the first day, we end on the same day. Cool. With the with the dream ultimately. Okay. And we've done this a few times, of you being able with your family to take a few weeks or longer in Cabarete and for your child oh, to not feel nice. that there's this, you know, completely different vibe. Oh, that's I a, would that's say that's a cool thing to I would say yeah, that yeah, that's yeah, a big yeah. challenge. Yeah. It's a big challenge because what you have to be careful of is that in an attempt to recreate vibe, you don't want to limit anybody. So we, you know, that's one of our big things over the last few years that we've learned is really what is Isla and what are the things that kind of must be there and then what are the things 
that are flexible depending on where you're at, which children are here, Makes which staff sense, is there, yes. right? Uh, so, you know what we can do? So, like I said, guys, in the beginning, we're going to be doing a walkthrough so you can get a feel for the campus. Uh, it's, it's, like, it's like this little magical place. Uh, as soon as you come here, you feel the difference, you feel the energy, and it's all positive. Uh, you said one thing right now. What is Isla? Yeah. So I guess nobody could explain to you better than this gentleman right here. What is Isla? Yeah. Hey guys, Cash here, President and CEO of RealEstateInLosTrans.com. If you like what you're seeing here today, please remember, like, subscribe, and share this content. Thank you. What is Isla? Yeah. Well, it's a student first place, number one. Both of our campuses, I'll, I'll describe some similarities. Perfect. And that, that might yes. be, be representative. Yes. Um, we learn using projects, okay? All, every six weeks, our students are all working on something called a unit of investigation. They work backwards from this big project idea. What does that mean? That means that with the teachers and the students together, we create a student-selected and teacher-guided project that will drive the students cool. to learn the content of the unit. It's totally creative, and then we present our learning to the, to to the, the community. Parents. Yeah, right. the community, yep. Both of our campuses are located in the very back, no traffic, Correct. of quiet beachfront communities. Both campuses have a lot of green space, a lot of shaded trees. Yes. Um, both campuses have lots of outdoor classrooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, You're going to see our that. Our students Charlie. do not sit indoors. Even our indoor classrooms are still outdoors. Are still outdoors <laughs> yeah, to a yeah. certain extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we um, we do everything ourselves. So. Every furniture, every roof, every shelf we build in-house with local builders and local so materials. Cool. We do all the painting. The students are involved in the murals that are on the wall, uh, in the creation of the rules. Cool. Everything. It's amazing. Um, and um, yeah, I think the we students were, are your board of directors. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I once was asked by yeah. a, um, I once was asked by <laughs> a government official to provide. Uh, I'm not sure the the list, business term for this, list but you know, board of directors. You no, know, it was like describe. Uh, would you lay out your organizational, you know, pyramid yeah, here? Yeah. And I submitted. They they wanted to see director at the top and then assistant the here. Status and, quo right, again, yeah. and I submitted something that had the students above. Yes, yes, yes. The school director. And, which is actually not a pyramid, it's, so it's more cool. like an hourglass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and, but I mean, that, that's intentional because uh, I really, again, I think if you want kids to challenge themselves, then they have to feel like they're in a space where that's okay to do that. That's amazing. If they own the space. If they own the space, they're going to care for the space, they're going to get better yeah. in the space. Also, when they, when they select their own projects, okay, I'll give you an example. Yeah. How easy is it for students, it happens a lot when we get new students here, it, it, there's a challenge, it's a topic that's difficult. And their first inclination is to go, I'm bored with that, or I didn't like the teacher, or the, the materials were confusing, or something like Some, that. Some uh, reason. Who else yes, is yes. the problem? Right? Yes, yes. So here, I would, I would respond to that to say, but you selected that, right? You, were, you owned that, you were a part of that. Yes, yes. So where can we reflect on so how can we your change? choices, right? The choices of the direction of your project, or cool. the area of focus. And once you put that back in the hand of the students, they suddenly realize it can take a few units, but they start to realize, oh, well, if I want this experience to be something that fits for me, then Make I have stuff. to go do it, right? Yes. And I have to be a part of that. And that's not to say they're not getting support, but of they, course, of they course. begin to own their choices. And that Most is important where, lesson. right, it's like, then they understand, okay, I can, I can go also at my own pace. I can sit next to a student and not be expected to be ahead or behind in yes. any particular area, That's but I can own where I'm at, right? Yes. There's no stigma to that in any way. Yes. Um, and that just creates an, uh, a desire. To learn. Absolutely, right. Learn to love to learn. That's right. That's it, that's awesome. So the extracurricular activities, when I uh, got exposed to that and started reading about what these, what these children are able to do, uh, extracurricular-wise, uh, I was blown away. Uh, surfing. Well, I mean, we're steps from in the beach. Trinus, we're steps from the surfing beach, so our students go to the beach all the time. Um, why wouldn't they? I yeah, mean, why wouldn't they? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I went there yesterday. That was part yeah, of the class. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but also, the things like when you're when you're being asked as a child 
to represent what you learned to a community of people and you're being given choice on how to do that, yeah. then there's this natural inclination to go to these types of things like arts, like music, like dance, like yes. languages, like tech even, cool. in, a, in a way to, to, to share that information. Yes. So it's all integrated in that way. That yes, we do all those classes separately, but even science class is full of art. That it's full so cool. of music because how do you, I'll put it this, like this, and I think this is something that we've seen very recently. Okay. Okay. I'm a scientist in a lab. I discover <laughs> the cure. The cure. For something. Yes. Right? I've got it. It's right here. No one cares unless I can communicate that yes. effectively. Correct. And correct. so how do I communicate? I mean, there is a reason that it's done in, in, in a broad of spectrum course. of ways so that we can connect with as many people as possible. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And so it's critically important that it's not just design thinking in STEM, which is a huge part of what we're doing, but it's also about that communication aspect. Correct. And to creatively communicate an idea or discovery can be as big as the discovery itself. And that's every day here. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay, guys. So uh, you got a chance to uh, meet with uh, my good friend Sean here, and he was able to explain uh, some of the philosophies that drive this amazing place, this amazing school, and uh, explain to you what you can expect if you come and join us here in Los Trenas. Reach out to us, and uh, we'll help you out with other stuff, but this is going to be the man that will help you out with uh, getting your children settled in and making sure they get a great education while you guys... Uh, is it possible to say one thing? One of course, thing? Yeah, 100%. Okay. I get to meet a lot of people, probably you do as well, Yes. right before, in that infancy stage of thinking of moving, right? Yes, yes, it's correct, correct. Okay, and there's a lot of questions about the child. That's why they're, they're contacting Per Exactly. Okay. And especially older children who have been in a maybe a homogenous community where you know, everyone is sort of the same, there can be this fear, well, if I imagine what happens when a new person moves to, moves to my community, I don't want that to happen to me when I go to this new of place. Course. I don't want to feel that way. I don't want to be left out. I don't want to be seen Start as Start over and yeah. everything else, yeah. Something that is pretty cool about this whole area, I would say, the entire Dominican Republic and these towns yes. and these schools in particular is that there's such a diversity of students and it is a quite transient location that a 14-year-old kid who shows up with no Spanish or whatever, they're accepted very quickly. Yes, I they, noticed that. There's no, this kid's different. And almost every other child here has also gone through that process. The majority of the students here, it's not as though they were born here necessarily. Yeah, yeah, you're they're right. coming from every other place. So there is this very quick acceptance with adults as well. And with adults as well. But with the well, kids, yeah. you know, that's such a big part Correct. of feeling within weeks that you have friends yeah i mean that's crazy it doesn't happen like yeah. that in north america it yeah. takes could take years before you're accepted into generations in generations some small towns, yeah yeah you know. yeah hundred in small yeah. towns specifically Absolutely. right no that's good i'm glad you added that on because yeah. it's really important uh so guys what we're going to do next is we are going to go for a quick walk around the campus and then i'm going to uh we're going to give you a quick aerial then at the very end so stick around until the end of the video and you'll be able to see how close this uh, how close Isla is to the beach and the surrounding area, nature all around us. Uh, you guys will really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, so I'll talk to you guys at the very end of this. We're going to go for a quick tour. Thanks. Okay, guys, so we're getting ready to go on, uh, on the tour. Okay, I want you to see the camps. I want you to feel it like all of my videos. Uh, I really appreciate when you guys share the content, when you like it. Uh, get this stuff out there to people. If you're not considering moving and you just enjoy learning about Lost Trainers from me, uh, get it out there because there might be somebody out there that is ready to make the move and uh, you never know what somebody's personal situation is. This might be the best thing that could happen to somebody, okay, or yourself. So again, I really appreciate it. Share, like, uh, subscribe. I personally really, really, really appreciate that and want to say thank you. So what we're going to do next is Sean is just putting away, uh, checking on a couple things and he'll be out here in a minute, but I want to show you the, uh, the playground. Look at these, uh, look at the beautiful trees like we talked about. Um, there are QR codes on the trees. The students did that, so every single tree, you're able to know which tree, um, what kind of tree it is, all that cool stuff. So walk with me really quick. I want you guys to see, get, get a feel of the campus. Okay, everything is completely closed. It's completely gated off. Uh, so security is absolutely not a concern, but Lost Trainus in and of itself, guys, uh, is a very, very secure. Like I said in so many videos, I feel more secure 
here in Los Angeles with my family than I do back home in Windsor, Ontario. Okay, uh, not, nothing against Windsor. I'm just saying I feel way more secure here. So safety has never been a concern for us here, but nevertheless, there's large fences um, and it's very safe and secure. Okay, so it's a beautiful playground. It's so natural. You can see the roots coming here on these trees. You got palm trees here. Uh, very often, whenever I come in to pick up Elle, uh, the kids are playing volleyball. There's a volleyball court set up here. Uh, the kids are always playing. Back here, I want to show you something really quick before we go into the school and uh, around the back. Uh, you can see this area over here. There's a pond set up. So there's more natural life uh, be right behind where we were doing that interview. Okay, there's uh, turtles in there and there's some fish and it's cool stuff like that. Okay, uh, swing set set up. Everything, like Sean mentioned, is made uh, by local contractors. They're supporting the local community in that regard. And students are able to paint these things and be fully engaged in this process. Like we said, the students are the board of directors. Okay, guys, I really want to point out this tree. This is uh, something you don't see very often, but you gotta look at this tree. Look at how magical this, this tree is. It is probably a couple hundred years old and it is one of the most beautiful trees I've ever seen in my life and these kids are playing next to this thing all day all the time okay uh, so Sean is back and what I just did Sean I just gave him a quick walkthrough of the playground uh -huh. okay and I was waiting for you we're gonna do a quick walkthrough on the uh, inside and outside while everything's outside so mostly yeah. let's go all right all right, let's do it. Okay, guys. So, uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run through the uh, run through the school and show you so you can uh, feel what it what, what what it's all about. Okay. So this is the main entrance. I'll let Sean go ahead and start explaining. That's right. So we're here at the end of the Playa Bonita neighborhood. We are about a hundred meters from beautiful Playa Bonita and Playa Coson. You enter here. You have an easy drop off. You can walk in. As I said, plenty of parking. You come on in. We're always having people here to greet yep. uh, music playing you come on in and then what you'll see is a campus that is largely outdoors now there's many reasons for that yeah uh, why would you want to be in beautiful Dominican Republic locked inside I'm not sure totally agree. it is <laughs> yeah. hot yeah. Um, uh, but also we do feel that 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 um, I guess that the, the ambiance of being in nature sets the tone for everything else. I agree. It does create a tranquility here. So, so we're gonna walk you through some of our little tree houses. Cool. And fashion Let's do it. here. Okay. It truly is a magical space, guys. Every time, this is one of my favorite parts of the day coming here to pick up elf. Yeah. So this might not look like a traditional classroom here, and this is not necessarily a space where 15 kids are listening to a lecture, but it is a space where students are learning. You'll see the hammock there. You'll see a sofa area over there. You'll see some bean bags because we are under no um, belief that you must be sitting in a desk <laughs> in order for learning to occur. Come so this way. So guys, uh, we're at the tail end of the day. It's about 4.15. Everybody has basically gone home. So chairs are up and stuff like that. And I've got some footage from before that's right, that I right. show them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's going to keep going. Yeah, because I would say it is more beautiful when there's children running around. Yeah, but for sure. He's come through here. And it's, it's, I don't even know if this will translate on, on film. But I will tell you what it feels like to walk under this canopy. Come this Correct. way and you'll see what it's like to enter a classroom. Yeah, this is how our daughter Elle enters her classroom. She comes down this beautiful path. Uh, Sophia at the front holds her hand right. and walks her all the way in here. Yeah, and this is Elle's classroom. Space, which, yeah, again, is a bit... Let's see if I can light it up a little bit here. No need. Um, totally outdoors. Totally outdoors, the little chairs. Here's uh, the names on the table. So everybody has their little space where they sit. Everything made out of local materials. Even the, the, the walls are made out of locally sourced materials. Students see it happen. Uh, we work with a lot of great artisans here. Uh, and it's just a magical thing for them to see their school Sorry guys, grow I'm just up. trying, I wanna find it. Elle's little spot, I know she recently oh, she is. she's right here. You found her? Oh, right she's there. right there. there we go. So there's, uh, there's our little angel, Elle. Her name's right there, that's where she sits all day. Uh, yeah, it's just so cool. The vibe is bang on. And, I can only imagine if I was that old and I was able right. to be exposed to this, that my entire the entire course of my life probably would have changed. Yeah, I, I remember 
in my early days of teaching, we learned about some of the colors that are used in in school hallways to reduce, you know, oh, wow. reduce the energy level of students. Yeah, and we're uh, the here, we, we just decided to get rid of the walls altogether. <laughs> yeah. So there's no need. So Come what on. age group is this? Uh, so this this group is what we call primary. So this three, four, and five. Three, four, and five. Okay, yeah. got it. Uh huh. Cool. Perfect. So now we're going to move on to which classroom? Uh, we will go on over to the elementary, one of our first elementary classes. Okay, so we're going to go over to uh, the elementary class now. And elementary class is what uh, What age is there? These kids are going to be five, six, seven. Yeah, we'll move them yeah these kids are going to be five, six, and seven uh, okay. in the next classroom. Got it, got it. Uh, have a peek here really quick. Come with me. Now, what I did notice is the children put their chairs up and put their stuff away is that correct or was i dreaming they, they do at the end of the day at that's the, the day, thing right? just to make it easier for cleaning but it's good i yeah. think it's a good exercise sure. in uh cleaning the room at home yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely for sure um yeah i mean with one of the challenges of being outdoors is that there is a bit more of you know cleaning, There's and cleaning and absolutely. Absolutely. For, sure, so, for sure for sure uh students are all a big part of that and um we go uh, we we take a lot of energy to to let them know the adults here that are responsible for keeping this garden yep. and these classrooms clean. The more that they know those teachers, the more they interact Correct. with them, uh, then the more likely they are to contribute to the cleanliness. Completely agree. Campus. Okay, so let's move on to the next classroom. Yeah. We'll stay in the hallway. Yeah. But you don't have to because we can go like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty cool. interesting, wow. right? Like if you. you here. Here we are, Okay. Uh, yeah, in the hallway, so to speak, so to speak. Uh, between two of the different elementaries. This is lower elementary, this is upper elementary. Okay. So you do have about a five, six, seven age range here, more of a seven, eight, nine age range. Okay. Over here, Got it. it's not as though that is completely static. I mean, there are te students that might move from different spaces uh, to do things like reading groups or math groups because one of the things that's critical is that if you're going to be doing teacher-led direct instruction of a group of students that are at all different levels, it's it, in order to, for it to be effective, you need to be working in small ability-based groups. So we organize the st students based on their needs for reading, for math. Good, good, good. Instead of trying to teach 15 students at the same time the same thing, we will meet with a group of four. It's very personalized. Yeah, absolutely. Well, cool, each, cool. each student is at their own place. Yeah. And so it's it's okay for them to be at a different level than their classmates. I love that. Okay, guys, follow us. All right. We're passing here the upper elementary class, seven, eight, nine. You'll remember this space from earlier. We're coming back uh, towards the front kind area. kind of a central again, yes. independent learning area. Okay. And just over here, we can walk this way underneath the trees. Isn't this magical? Uh, you're able to see this. the children live in this environment, which is right. so great. So here, okay. here is a space that's typically occupied by middle school students. Um, they are wide open in the outdoor area in what, yeah. would, what would be described as a large covered balcony area. And um, so they spend the majority of their time here. Our high school students actually, based on some recent expansion and growth here, have uh, annex the upstairs classroom that we have and they are in Great. the midst of designing their own space. So they just painted murals last week. Amazing. Uh, we just finished two pieces of furniture last <laughs> week cool. and they're all in the midst of the design of what it's supposed to feel like for kids of their age. Yeah. Cool. That's amazing. Good, good, good. You see a little library set up over there. Uh, I've been to a few different uh, presentations that you've done uh -huh. and uh, I'm always, every single time, blown away. And I do have some footage, so I'll share some of that at the end as well for you guys to kind of get a feel for it. Uh, but, Sean, what you've done here is magical. Uh, I want to end this interview at this, uh, at this sign over here. Come with me, everyone. I want you guys to read. I want you guys to read these, uh, what would you say, tree signs. Yeah. Street signs, but over here are the called street Made signs. Made by students. Made by students. Yeah. They are right over... Over here. I'm lost. Ah, uh, here we are. Okay, guys. So here we are. I want you to read these, and this is how we'll close off this interview, because right. this is what happens here. I'll let Sean go ahead and, uh, right. and read those off to you. So, here we go. In our garden, we are risk takers, explorers, nature detectives, great friends, and 
And you have a bit of installed art here as well. Yes. I mean, you, there's something really cool when you find this one tiny detail tucked in the middle of a tree. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that really lends to what we're talking about with our students and their projects. Because students can think, well, I'm finished. I've done my project. I met my goals. And when you can point out that true greatness comes from those little details, that one extra step that sets yours apart from others, that's sort of evident by some of these little things like this, where we go, this is really the magic of the school. That's the magic. There's buildings everywhere, but you come to this post, and why are there flowers painted on the post? Is it necessary? No. Is it nice? Yes. Absolutely. Is it a feel that there's some care? going on in the campus? Do the students feel that and everything that they do? There it is. Sean, I have to say, uh, I'm so excited to have our daughter here for the next yeah. 12 years Us with too. you. Us too. And uh, I think she's going to come out of this place. Uh, you're gonna be one of her big fans. Uh, she'll be one of your big fans. And uh, I can't wait for this relationship to blossom. Her with all her friends that she's making from all around the world. Uh, the next 12 years are gonna be exciting. And guys, uh, if you're thinking about moving, uh, whether you move to Los Terrenas or you move to uh, South Korea or wherever you decide to go, uh, don't be afraid to do it. Step outside that box. Step out, I like to say step outside the matrix and there's a beautiful world out there. Uh, if you're choosing Los Terrenas, like we have, we love it. We've been all around the world and this is the spot we picked. If you're picking Los Terrenas, reach out to us. Okay, there's some uh, almonds falling or maybe it was a coconut, I'm not <laughs> sure. But, uh, uh, reach out to us. We're going to guide you. We're going to help you obviously with the real estate stuff. You guys know that uh, today's interview is not about that today. Today's interview is about your family, uh, your children, and uh, finding a great home for them. And this is a gentleman that you've met today. There you go. Uh, you're going to be able to reach out. I'm going to put your information there. Actually, you know, guys, just reach out to me. I'll connect you directly with Sean. Uh, if you have any questions, he'll answer all of those there questions is. for you. I'm going to help. Yeah. And that's it, guys. So remember, love where you live and learn to love to learn. Thank you, my friend. Great job. Thank you.